the first virtual panoramic game in the world is introduced under the name of Ice Kai Love Overture. The game has unique gaming equipment and a fully interactive immersive system, which helped him instantly get people worldwide after it was released. The game has limitless possibilities, giving players a unique experience while they play it. The rich gameplay and extreme sandbox aspect of the game make players feel as if they have drifted to another world. The players act as human feudal lords on the continent. They establish territory, raised armed forces, and developed science, technology, and magic. The players also persist in their resistance against demon kind with the aid of goddesses, but both of them have transformed the game into a romance game. In the game, players can cultivate favorability with any NPC. Some players even get together with the goddess, but there is a certain existence in this game world that can't be controlled. This existence is the demon in the game, and to this day, no player has been capable of subduing the demon. Most players who have been abused by them choose to retreat. The strongest demon among all these is the demon of lust named Lisha. Despite all this, a player named Chengxi, whose profession is warrior, has managed to capture Lisha. She is much ahead of Chengxi's level, and her favorability is loathing. She is extremely unhappy with him capturing her, and prefers to get destroyed instead of being in someone's possession. She asks Shenzi to murder her, but he smiles smugly as he replies that he doesn't want to murder her. This triggers her more, as she almost shouts at him and asks what he wants from her. She says that he should just go to the kingdom and receive the bounty, or go to the goddess's temple and use her to win the favor of those lowlice. Chengxi is calm as he replies that she got it all wrong, as he has no intention of taking a bounty. He says that the thing he wants is her body and requests that she marry him. This sudden request shocks Lisha, who is silent for a moment, and then yells that he is actually confining someone as my noble self for such a ridiculous reason, which is the worst possible insult for a demon. Chengxi starts to grow irritated too, as he retaliates that there is nothing wrong with liking a woman and courting her. Lydia yells that this is not how he should do courting, but Chengxi is calm as he replies that he has no other choice since the demons destroy a person on sight. He needed to degrade her so he could have a proper conversation with her. After listening to him, Lydia says that even if he can confine her, she will never agree to marry a racial inferior like him. Chengxi says that she shouldn't blame him if he uses unconventional methods, and before Lydia can understand what he means, Chengxi pushes her down on the ground. Lydia keeps shouting at him to let her go, but Chengxi ignores her and takes out a tube with pink liquid in it. He smiles viciously as he tells Lydia that this is his love potion, which he specially customized for her, and he had to go to extreme lengths to get it from the goddess of love. He forces Lydia to drink the potion, not wanting to make his efforts go in vain, and holds her mouth close until she savors it all. Lydia tries to protest not being able to drink anymore, but Chengxi doesn't stop. After giving her two drinks, he looks at her favorability and is surprised that it actually went up. He comments about how a goddess couldn't help but fall deeply in love with him after just one bottle. He gets a boost of confidence from that, and he empties his bag, which was filled with the bottles of potion, in front of Lichia, who doesn't seem happy with him comparing the demons to the goddess. Looking at his potions, Chengxi said how he was quick-witted and prepared 99 bottles of potion. Lichia is shocked to see this, but Chengxi keeps feeding her the potion, increasing her favorability further. After a while, Lisha mumbles that she can't drink anymore, already feeling very warm. Chengxi coaxes her into drinking more by saying that there is just one more left, but Lisha is not convinced as he has already said the same thing many times. Chengxi doesn't back down from his mission until Lisha is completely under his control and starts requesting more potion. Her favorability is finally maxed out, and she happily hugs Chengxi, who is almost sweating from the hard work he has to put into Brika through Lisha's resistance. Chengxi then takes out a ring from his pocket and says to Lisha that he can't propose to her since it is against the game's rules, so he is giving her this ring so she can propose to him instead. Lisha is completely gone at this point and happily takes the ring from his hand, instantly going down on one knee. She asks him to marry her, and Chengxi says yes immediately, finally fulfilling his mission. Soon they get married and get a congratulatory message from the system that informs them that, since they are married now, their lives, abilities, and attributes will be shared from this point forward. They happily walk out of the church, holding each other's hands. Lishia is happily bouncing while Chengxi proudly thinks about how only he can be the one who has the strongest boss as his first marriage partner. His level has increased to its maximum after the marriage, 
and he has already gained a lot of special skills that would be a hard task otherwise. Chengxi is happy with his achievement and is already planning to carry out the next phase of his plan. He happily shouts that he wants to subdue the other demons, but his statement angers his current wife, who is shocked by the fact that he still wants to marry the other demons, even though he already has her. Chengxi pinches her cheek, asking if she is jealous, but Lisha looks away, denying feelings that way. Chengxi follows through on his plan, and soon the system notifies everyone that Chengxi has captured every demon. The other players have mixed reactions to that, as some of them have already been expecting that from Chengxi, but some are not happy with him subduing all the demons and want to slaughter him. Meanwhile, Chengxi is lying peacefully in the grass with Lishia sleeping beside him. But he is in deep thought. Chengxi is thinking about how all the witches have been subdued, but he just doesn't know when the creators of the game will update the expansion pack and bring him a new wife. Chengxi comes out of his thoughts and stares at her current wife, Lydia, who is in a deep sleep beside him. Seeing her exposed front, Chengxi's feelings stir as he tries to touch her. But before he can do so, the system sends him a caution. He is furious at that and sees the notification that says that he can't touch onto or below NPC's neck. Chengxi is angry at the fact that he can't touch his own wife. He lies back on the grass and again drifts into his thoughts, trying to figure out what he can do next, since all the demons gave up their old ways and followed him. All the demons surrendered on their own, and the world finally became peaceful and prosperous. He finally takes off his VR glasses, growing bored with the monotone game. He lies on his bed in real life, beside his body-sized pillow Lycia. He yawns loudly, saying how it seems like there is nothing interesting left in the game. He still wants to do something more and is thinking about subduing the goddess too. He falls asleep eventually and is oblivious as he is pulled into some other universe. A system detects his presence and announces to the residents of that place that through endless periods in history, an otherworlder who has thoroughly vanquished the demon forces has finally appeared in this world. The system asks permission to summon him, and a woman who seems to hold authority permits him to do so. She stands in a huge circle as she orders the system to exhaust all of her power to maintain the marriage contract to the very end. The system reminds her of the possibility of her dying in the process, but she calmly replies that to save this world, sacrifice is inevitable. Beyond the endless span of time, the world is now changing for the first time in a thousand years. Chengxi's unconscious body falls through the space as the conversation between the system and that woman goes on. The system asks her if she is truly capable of rewriting history and delivering this world, to which the woman just replies that she will wait and see. Chengxi finally wakes up, feeling dizzy, and scratches his head as he feels something very soft touching him. His first thought is that it must be his Lycia pillow, and he caresses it, but he is surprised at the unusual feelings. Chengxi is shocked when a voice from beside him calls him out for moving his hands carelessly. Chengxi scrambles to the side as he almost yells in fear, calling Lygia his wife and mentioning how she looks awful. Lycia snarls as she asks him who he is calling her wife. She takes out some magical ball and says to Chengxi that she will obliterate him. Chengxi bolts away, trying to save his life while shouting that he will die of domestic abuse. She throws the magic ball at him, creating a huge hole in her wall while shouting at how the guards can let a human infiltrate her room. She is annoyed by the situation and comments that she needs to fire some people. Suddenly, Chengxi reappears from the ruin, as it seems like he is thinking deeply, and says that it must be a bug in the game, but he dismisses his thought as this game's system is world reborn, and it could even function normally even if the server collapsed. He is still confused by this as he thinks his wife, whom he got after investing so much in a potion and giving his full effort, shouldn't be attacking him like that. Lycia is completely baffled to see that he is still alive, and is more shocked when she sees her body reacting to Chengxi's presence. She figures that it is happening due to the established marriage contract between them, and is angered at the prospect of Chengxi doing something unknown to her. Seeing her confusion, Chengxi asks her if she is clueless about his previous actions. He starts walking slowly toward Lycia, who tries to back away, telling Chengxi to stop moving, but he ignores her protest. Chengxi holds her chin softly while coming closer to her and asks her if she is entering her rebellious phase now. Lydia tries to order him to let go of her, but Chengxi instead lies her on his lap and spanks her. Lydia couldn't escape the situation and is almost crying as no one has treated her like that before. Chengxi is surprised when his hand comes into contact with Lisha's backside without any problems. Lydia is furious by his actions and is ready to murder him, 
but Chengxi just repeats his actions and goes to stand at the side, leaving her lying there helplessly. He is thinking about new changes in the game and is sure that there must be some bug in the game. He is thinking about visiting customer service and tries to take off his glasses, but to his surprise, there is nothing on his face. He hesitantly tries to search for his glasses but can't find them. When he looks up, he is more surprised to see Lycia in front of him because it means that he is still in the game even though he has lost his VR glasses. Chengxi suddenly remembers that he has already taken off his VR glasses and once again touches Lycia, who is taken back by his sudden actions. After thinking hard, Chengxi is shocked by the possibility that he might have transmigrated into the game world. Chengxi and Lisha are still in her room when suddenly there is a loud knocking on her door as a servant from outside shouts that she heard a strange noise from the room. The woman is Dany, Lisha's personal maidservant, and she breaks into the room. She is shocked to see Chengxi massaging Lisha's feet. Chengxi is annoyed at hearing her surprise scream and asks her if she has never seen a massage before. Lydia joins in in the lie as she says that she is just enjoying a massage and scolds her maid for barging in even though she had forbid them to enter her private dwelling without permission. Dany quickly bows her head as she apologizes, saying that she just heard a loud noise and was concerned for her master. Lycia doesn't want her subordinate to find out about her getting spanked by Chengxi, as it will severely harm her dignity. She is thinking about that when suddenly Chengxi squeezes her foot sensually, causing her to scream and squirm in her place. Dany is shocked to see that, as Chengxi calmly says that it is a massage, Lisha will naturally shout when she feels most comfortable, and since he is a top-notch masseur, he can stimulate any point in the body. Lydia wondered what it was about Chengxi that made her feel so relaxed. Chengxi suddenly repeats his actions, causing Lisha to scream again. Dany is observing all this with a deep blush, which increases when Chengxi says that it is time to do a breast massage to finish things off. Dany suddenly runs away from the room, saying that she still has some clothes to wash. After she leaves, Chengxi moves to the head of the bed as he sits beside Lichia, and sensually asks her if his massage technique is good. Lichia suddenly turns around and almost kicks Chengxi as she says that she should stop calling her his wife and let her go. Chengxi replies that she should understand by now that her attacks have no effect on her. Lichia is embarrassed to hear that as she leaves and sits in the corner of the room, facing the wall. Lygia is confused by all this and thinks that Chengxi can easily beat her, even just by sending the weakest slime, but she, who is very strong, can't hurt Chengxi in any way. She stares at their wedding ring, thinking that it is truly an item for an established marriage. Suddenly realizing something, she shouts that Chengxi is possibly chosen by Lord Mother Goddess to be with her. Chengxi overhears her mumbling and says that she is right, as he is indeed the husband chosen for her by her mother while thinking to himself how nice it is that his wife has imagined an identity for him. Chengxi then finally says that he will explain the current status of things and tells her that all this is a result of the war between the goddess of creation and the demon goddess, which caused great injury to both sides. Following this clash, both sides sank into eternal sleep, but before going dormant, the demon goddess laid the foundation for marriage contracts between all the demons and him. This way, he will be allowed to select which demon will become her successor. After explaining all this, Chengxi asks Lygia if she understands now, in reply to which Lysia says that she just turned a thousand years old, so there is no problem in getting married. She suddenly looks cheerful and says that it is good that Chengxi chose her over others, while thinking to herself how every human and demon will surrender to her feet no matter the situation. Her hopes are crushed when Chengxi says that he didn't choose her, and she is just the first person he notified, so now he is going to tell every other person about it. Before he can leave, Lydia tells him to stop saying that he can't trouble himself by running around in circles as a messenger. She says that he would let her inform the others and bring them here to receive his evaluation. She creates a magic door there and is happy when Chengxi agrees to her suggestions. She says that it is settled then and asks him to rest while she goes and brings other people. Lydia starts walking toward the magic door while thinking about how she has no plan to inform others because the grandma's divine authority should belong to her. Once she disappears through the door, Chengxi sighs deeply, satisfied that he finally managed to fool her. He wasn't expecting Lisha to be so easily swayed, and he thinks that a sustained effort should be enough to sway her into the bed. Suddenly, a voice says to him that the lusty demon, who is not an easy one to deceive, actually bore the virgin loser's blow. Chengxi is baffled to hear the strange voice and starts looking around frantically, trying to find the person behind the voice. 
The strange voice again says that it is the system that brought him here and comments how it is surprising that the guy the mother goddess risked her life to bring here is actually very stupid. Chengxi starts to curse the system back but stops when the system says that it will hibernate after five minutes, so Chengxi should ask any questions in this short time. Chengxi quickly asks where this place is and how he can go back to his home. The system informs him that it is the actual world that corresponds to Esakai's love overture, and Chengxi is the only player to finish the game, so he can return as long as he subdues every demon, just like he did in the game. Chengxi is not satisfied with the answer, as he replies that it is impossible for him to achieve this since, in the game, he acquired aid from the dozen goddesses, captured and married Lysha, shared attributes with her, and went on to conquer every other demon. The system replies that he should marry Lysia immediately now so they can share attributes, and after that, Chengxi should go on to conquer every other demon. The system continues that it has also retained Chengxi's inventory from within the game, and even though he is only at level 1, he will not be murdered with a slime with the right equipment. This makes Chengxi happy since his inventory has plenty of world-class items, and he instantly goes to check them all. The first thing he sees is the wedding ring from his and Lysia's marriage. He looks at the description of the item and is shocked by the fact that it has addressed him with some pretty bad titles. The ring's description says that it is imbued with love that Elf Queen Sildi forged using Yama Jade, yet she was swindled by a certain scumbag who took the ring and married someone else. Chengxi says that he just asked the Elf Queen to forge the ring and nothing else, but then he remembers that he did cultivate the favorability between him and a dozen goddesses to the so-so level, but he didn't expect Sildi to think that he wants to marry her. He is relieved that he never maximized favorability for this world's goddess, or else things would have evolved into the most terrifying harem battlefield in history. Chengxi is worried that his little life might not be guaranteed and is planning to level up quickly after he gets out of there. Meanwhile, on the second floor of the palace, Lydia goes into a room where she greets the elven queen Sylvie, whom she has been meeting for a long time. Sylvie is a former elf empress who degenerated into a dark elf for unknown reasons, and now she serves under the Lysha and guards the second floor of the official palace. She turns around slowly at Lysha's voice and asks her not to call her elf queen since she is no longer the elven empress because of that man. Lydia says that Chengxi brought him so much sorrow, but Sildi shouts at that, telling her not to say that name. Lydia quickly says that she will not mention it again and then takes out another magic ball, saying that she has other reasons to call Sildi here. She says to Sildi that since she is very skilled at division, she has to help her examine all the information pertaining to the owner of these hairs. She throws the ball containing the hair towards Sildi, saying that the more detail she gives her, the better it will be. Sildi takes the ball in her hand and starts examining it without waiting for long. She starts explaining the attributes, saying that it is a 19-year-old male human with no specific powers and is an ordinary person who can't even hold a candle to the weakest slime. Lydia smiles viciously at that, realizing that Chengxi was lying to her earlier, but before she can proceed to plan something else, Sildi speaks again, saying that it is strange that this man has the auras of so many demons flowing through him. These demonesses include the Betrayal Demoness, the Hell Demoness, the Matriarch Demoness, the Full Moon Demoness, and many others. Listening to all this, Lydia thinks to herself that this man will definitely possess demon auras if he really was sent by her mother, but she is confused as to why the Mother Goddess will choose a human being as the messenger. Lysia suddenly calls Demon Eye, and a weird creature with several eyes appears in front of her. The Demon Eye is the first floor guardian of the Lust Demonis's official palace, and it can turn the common man into a stone statue. Lydia orders the Demon Eye to murder the man in her room, while thinking to herself that if he is the messenger of the Mother God, a mere guard shouldn't be able to harm him. The Demon Eye starts moving toward her room, where Chengxi is kneeling on the floor in desperation while talking about how his level is not high enough, so he can only equip the cosmetics. The system tells him not to worry, saying that there is no level restriction on the wedding rings, so he should just equip those. Chengxi wears all the rings, some around his fingers while others around his neck, by joining them in a thread. Chengxi is enjoying wearing all these rings for a moment, but suddenly remembering something else. He asks the system what the use of wedding rings can be in this game world. The system replies that it is god-tier equipment at any rate, and is still better than having nothing. The system then announces that five minutes are over and it is going into hibernation. So this world now depends on Chengxi, and he can do what he thinks is better. The window suddenly disappears from there, 
leaving Chengxi alone and confused in the room. Suddenly, the demon eye appears behind Chengxi, who is still processing the disappearance of the system. The demon eye thinks to itself that a human dared to do such a rash thing in Lord Lisha's room, and he should receive his deserved punishment. He is thinking about a way to murder Chengxi, who is oblivious to his presence and is still trying to talk to the system. The demon eye is surprised to hear him talking, thinking that Chengxi has already noticed his presence. Chengxi keeps talking to the system, warning it to stop messing around and don't hide from him. The demon eye is baffled by the fact that Chengxi seems to notice its weakness and is also taunting him. He thinks to himself that since Chengxi has already seen through his hollow shuttling, there is no need for him to lie low, and it seems that he shouldn't underestimate this person. The demon eye suddenly takes its original form, ready to unleash everything on Chengxi, who finally turns around and is shocked to see the monstrous demon eyes in front of him. The demon eye introduces himself to Chengxi and says that since Chengxi has already figured out his weakness, he must be a worthy opponent. Chengxi recognizes the demon eyes as those of Lord Nishitomi, whom Lydia keeps as a guardian and is confused as to where they came from. The demon eye suddenly attacks Chengxi, who slips on a ball while trying to escape and easily dodges the upcoming attack. The demon eye is surprised by his action, and when Chengxi lands on the bed, he takes it that the human is not affected by him and is casually sitting like that. He thinks that this happened because his attacks are so ridiculous that Chengxi is not taking them seriously. He notices the items that Chengxi has previously thrown onto the ground, finding that they are of no use to him, and is thinking about how Chengxi has casually thrown all the world-class items on the ground like they don't make any difference. The Demon King can't help but think that Chengxi is not paying any attention to him, and it is ridiculous that he is trying to fight with such a man. He suddenly bows in front of Chengxi, apologizing for provoking him like that, and says that he didn't come here with any ill intentions, but was just following Lisha's orders. The Demon King disappears from there after that, while Chengxi just sits there idly, thinking about how he nearly avoided death today. He wants to complete the marriage contract with Lichia as soon as possible so he can change her attributes, or else he will be finished one of these days. When Lichia returns to her room, Chengxi is peacefully sleeping in her bed. She remembers the demon eye's words saying that Chengxi has incomparable strength, and it is good that his root eye of life was somewhere else, or he wouldn't be able to serve her anymore. Lichia is annoyed by all this and raises her hand toward Chengxi, wanting to hurt him, but before she can do so, Chengxi suddenly holds her hand and pulls her onto the bed. He hovers over her, saying that if she wants his body that much, she should just tell him that. Lydia yells at him for calling her greedy, but Chengxi is calm as he leans closer to her, saying that as long as they unite, she will gain the divine authority of the demon god and become a true god. He further lures her by asking her if she doesn't want the divine authority of mother god. Lydia turns to face him as her face is red with blush, and she admits that she wants to have the divine authority that Chengxi is mentioning. Chengxi is shocked to see the cute expression on Lisha's face as he didn't imagine a demon to be this cute. He wasn't expecting that a dignified demon would put on a shy expression like that and is having a hard time controlling himself. Chengxi suddenly puts his hand on her legs, but he doesn't seem phased by her blushing or complaining. He takes out a necklace that he made up of several rings, among those is a ring that belongs to the goddess of love. He presents the necklace to Lichia, saying that these are the rings her mother god gave him to conclude marriage contracts with the demoness, and as long as they are married, she can inherit the full power of mother god. Lichia is taken off guard when Chengxi suddenly confesses his undying love for her and says that he doesn't want to see other demons and only wants to marry Lichia. She is surprised by his statement and says that they still don't know each other well and should take time to get to know one another. Chengxi leans closer to her, saying that it is a good idea and saying that they should start by being connected on deeper levels. Understanding his suggestive tone, Lydia gives in to him, and they start being intimate with each other, but are interrupted when Dany suddenly barges into the room. She is extremely embarrassed at catching them in the act and quickly covers her eyes, exclaiming that she saw nothing. They quickly pull away from each other as Lycia sits up, asking Dany why she came into her room again. Dany fears for her life and begs Lisha to spare her, saying that she didn't see anything and just came here because she was instructed by Lycia to prepare a milk bath. Lydia comes closer to her, saying that things aren't as they appear and that there is nothing between her and that man. Dany quickly says that Lisha is not sleeping with anyone and she saw nothing. 
Chengxi interrupts their conversation as he says to Dany that this is called bed warming, and in this cold weather, he has to warm Lisha's bed before she goes to sleep. Seeing that Dany still needs more convincing, Chengxi adds that Lisha's body needs to be warmed up when she sleeps as well. Lydia adds that it is just like Chengxi is saying, and since he is warming her bed, she doesn't need a milk bath. Dany quickly says that she understands and will not interrupt them anymore, and then runs out of the room. After she leaves, Lydia seals the door with her magic so no one can disturb them again. Chengxi calls her back to the bed, saying that he is ready and they should continue from where they left off. Lycia is annoyed as she replies to him that he hasn't promised him yet, so they still need to start out with a romantic relationship. She turns around to find that Chengxi has wrapped a rope around his body sensually and says to her that he wasn't expecting such a rude comment from her. He asks her to not get scared by him and just join him so they can continue with their previous activities. Lycia replies to him that he is misunderstanding something because she doesn't lactate for anything like that and he should know that cows can imbue their milk with a special magic that can enable racially transitioning into a panda. Chengxi is surprised to hear this as he says that it sounds awful to hear that a man bear will appear. She continues that it can also transition genders which will reverse their rules. Chengxi screams to hear this, imagining impure things in his mind. Seeing his reaction, Lydia shouts at him, asking him what is going through his head. Chengxi shouts at her that she almost made him jealous and asks her what she was intending to do with Dany's milk. Lycia quickly replies that she only used it for a buff effect. He again asks her what buff Dany's breast provides, to which Lycia replies that it is top secret information that could cause a war between the demonesses if leaked. Chengxi is a little intrigued by this and thinks to himself that he will have to keep an eye on Dany if Lycia finds it that amazing. He suddenly turns around, saying that he doesn't want to deal with someone so late and that they should rest first. Lycia is confused by his statement and asks him if he is planning to spend the night in her room. Chengxi casually replies that it is exactly what he wants, and as a messenger of Mother God, he naturally wants to observe her closely. He then adds that it is just a 24-hour examination, and she will have to endure it for the sake of divine authority. Lydia hesitantly agrees with him and warns him not to cross the line toward her side of the bed. Soon they lie together in bed, facing away from each other, as they deeply think about something. With an evil smile, Chengxi thinks to himself how Lisha is mistaken if she thinks he is sleeping here with good intentions and will subdue her tonight. Just then he takes Lisha's game, Dawn Star, which momentarily shocks Chengxi as he is worried about Lisha finding his true identity. Before he can panic further, Lydia continues asking him if he knows someone with this name. Chengxi is relieved that she doesn't know about that but is thinking about how she was awake this whole time. He replies to her that he doesn't know that person and asks him to explain who that is. Lydia tells him that she doesn't know the specifics of it, only that the person has brought great misfortune to many goddesses, and he was a scumbag who betrayed their feelings. Chengxi is startled to hear such comments about himself, but stays silent as Lydia continues that, at some point, she even thought that the person was sent by the mother god to deal with the goddesses. Then she changed her opinion thinking that he must be something like one of those apostles since the world has changed since Mother God went dormant. Lydia continues that the creation goddesses lackeys, the divine apostles, that is, they ran wild, and during the age of Dawn Star, they emerged on large scale. The divine apostles were seemingly summoned by the creation goddess from a place called Earth. They appear out of nowhere and were sinister and cunning despite being small and weak, but most of all, they could be resurrected infinitely. Chengxi is confused to hear her mention all these terms and is wondering if these divine apostles refer to the game's player base. Wanting to know further, he asks Lycia what happened after that and if these divine apostles still exist. She tells him that they vanished where they stood and the demons lost many memories of that period. Lygia says that she only knows that something terrible happened to her. But on the other hand, goddesses' memories were apparently preserved, but even in death, they would be unwilling to confide a word. All they got from them was one erupting name, and that was Dawn Star. Lydia tells him that she tried to find information about that person, and the only thing she found out was that the person was a criminal, wanted by all of humankind. Chengxi is baffled to hear that all the things he did inside the game might actually happen in this world. He sees the poster that says that Dawn Star is a wanted criminal, and also has a huge amount on his head if someone captures him. He can't comprehend the fact that the system missled him, but he recognizes the epic tier equipment he worked hard to forge and is happy that it hid his actual face in the wanted poster. 
He still can't understand what crime he committed and is thinking that it might be abandoning all the goddesses when the apostles stop being summoned. His suspicions are correct as he finds out after looking at the wanted poser and is angry at the fact that they kept half a million as a bounty on his head. Meanwhile, Dany has talked to other maids about Chengxi being Mother God's messenger, and the news has spread to all the other demons. Full Moon Demonis finds it through her maid, and is shocked to hear that marrying this man will allow one to inherit the power of Mother God. All the demons found out the news in no time, and they all decided to leave the palace and go to Lish's place. To contend for divine authority, every demon decides to assemble. Chengxi is sleeping peacefully on the bed, oblivious to the fact that Demonis has gathered, and they are all eager to get a taste of him. Lycia is enjoying her early morning soap peacefully, and is ecstatic at the fresh start of a new day. Sylvia is also in the pool, a few feet away from her, and second is her statement, saying that such a refreshing morning shower is a supreme pleasure. She adds that even within this most refined and satisfying morning, an interloping worm seems to squirm about. Chengxi is also there, enjoying his time in the pool. Sildi says to Lichia that she once promised her that this city would be without men. Lichia replies that things are very complicated at the moment while thinking to herself how none of her magic works on Chengxi. Sildi says that human males are an existence of utmost impudence and depravity. She then requested that Lichia turn this man to dust with her willpower. Chengxi is listening to their conversation and says that it seems like Sildi was once betrayed by a man. Ignoring her solemn facial expression, he continues, how can someone dare treat such a beautiful person like that? And she will help her get revenge if they ever meet with that person. Sildi stands up as she arrogantly comments on how Chengxi talks too much and says that she feels like she heard his voice somewhere before. Chengxi also feels her voice is familiar and orders the system to open the game panel. The system shows him Saliva's information and he is shocked to find out that she is a former elf empress. He is completely taken back by the fact that the elf empress has turned into a demon lord and is hoping that it was not his fault. Sylvie gets closer to him in the meantime and asks him if they have met somewhere before. Chengxi grows anxious by her cold tone and quickly says that he just got here yesterday and he is not the person she is looking for. Lygia calls Sylvie toward her, saving Chengxi from the confrontation. Chengxi is sure that he would be dead by now if Sylvie found out about his identity and is happy that he never took risks in the game and always hid his true identity. When Sildi goes to Lycia, she whispers in her ear that Chengxid is a normal human being according to her previous test, that something is off, and she can feel it. Sivlia is confused by her statement as Lycia continues to say that she brought him here today so that Sildi can test him on the spot. Sildi seems relieved to hear that and says that it would be even better with Lycia's permission. Chengxi is observing as they whisper to each other and is worried about what they are planning to do. They both suddenly look at him with evil smiles, making him even more conscious of what is happening. Sildi suddenly starts to chant something in eleven tongues, and a huge plant appears in the pool. Chengxi tries to run away, terrified by how the plant has suddenly appeared behind him. While running away, Chengxi shouts at the plant to not pull on his bath cloth. They are all surprised when the plant suddenly stops, and Sildi is even more confused as she didn't order the plant to do so. The plant suddenly starts moving again, but instead of attacking Chengxi, it goes towards Sildi and wraps her tightly in one of its branches. She is confused as to why the thing that she summoned is attacking her, and asks Chengxi what he did to it. Chengxi figures out that the ring must have hailed Sildi as an enemy since she summoned the tentacle vine to attack him. He looks at the ring on his finger that belongs to Elf Monero, and it was forged by Sildi using Yama Jade. Chengxi is slightly relieved at the fact that he had equipped this ring, or else he would be the one hanging up in Sildi's place. Chengxi then turns towards Sildi, saying to her that by now she must understand what would come her way if she tried to attack him and saying that it is time for her to receive her punishment. The plant suddenly starts to tickle Sildi's body, making her squirm and blush at the sensation. She calls Lycia for help, who is just staring at the scene in front of her, and says that the plant that Sildi summoned is too rotten. She then throws a magical ray toward the plant, asking Chengxi to show some restraint. Silet is finally free from the plant and falls back into the water. Lydia rushes to ask her if she is okay, while Chengxi is wondering if Lisha did this because she was feeling jealous. Lydia sits in front of Sildi and says that it seems like something went wrong in her previous test, as Chengxi is clearly not an ordinary human male. Sildi replies that an ordinary human can't take control of the tentacle vine from her, and even if Chengxi is no ordinary human, he is still a massive lecher. 
Chengxi is triggered to hear her say that and retorts that he is a leecher when Sila was the one who attacked him first. He says that right now he deals with Sildi in a gentle way, but it seems like it's not enough for her. Sildi is furious to hear him say that and is ready to attack him again, but Lisha pulls her back, stopping her from doing anything impulsive. Just then, there is a knock on the door as a servant from outside announces that he is here as per Lisha's command. She asks him what he found from the investigation, to which the person replies that, as proven by his investigation, there are indeed slave traders under the bondage D1 as trafficking humans in the territory corresponding to the palace's second floor. Hearing the explanation, Sildi instantly apologizes to Lisha for letting something like this happen under her watch over the second floor. Lichia replies that it is not her fault but the bondage demonises, who dared to create a presence, knowing full well that slavery was already abolished here. Lichia is furious and asks Soli to follow her, ready to deal with the situation. She then turns towards Chengxi, saying that he is coming with her too. He asks her why he needs to come, and Lichia tells him that it is the perfect opportunity for him to evaluate her and that she will let him see how this sovereign pulverizes those bugs. Lichia leads the way, excited to show those people the consequences of doing such things in her territory. In Lisha's palace, there are six floors, and each floor corresponds to a territory resembling a small nation with countless cities and towns. Then each floor is dominated by a formidable demon lord, the ultimate fortification all in all. Under Lisha's rule, each floor demon lord carefully manages their respective territory, and every stratum nation is furthermore glided by a flourishing image. Even though Lycia issued the abolition of slavery, the slave business persisted despite its indefinite prohibition. As the light more strongly glimmers, the shadow increasingly darkens. Currently, Lycia, Chengxi, and Sildi are walking in a certain town in the palace's second stratum nation. Chengxi is a few steps behind Lycia and calls her name. When she turns toward him, he asks her why Sildi keeps watching him intently. Sildi is continuously glaring at him, but Lydia tells him to ignore her, saying that she has an intense hatred for most males, but that is probably not the case for him. Chengxi can't help but think about how it seems like the memories of what he had done to the goddesses back then are still fresh in their minds. He suddenly hugs Lycia tightly, who asks him to let go, but he refuses. He wants to keep himself glued to Lydia until he has the strength to defend himself. They walk ahead of Sildi as Chengxi says that he feels more secure at his wife's side. Sildi, who is overhearing their conversation, thinks to herself that men are just sweet talkers and there is really nothing good about them. But Chengxi's flattery around Lycia feels very familiar. Seeing him get this close to Lycia irritates her, and she pushes Chengxi away, telling him to keep his distance from Lycia. She then turns toward Lycia and tells her to keep a low profile since she is going incognito this time. Lycia replies that common people may not recognize her since she rarely shows her face in public but she can be exposed if they say her name loudly. Chengxi tries to move toward Lycia again, saying to Sildi that she can't separate him from his love, but she puts a hand to his face, stopping him from moving any further, and tells him not to say Lycia's name out loud. Meanwhile, in a store nearby, a man welcomes all the customers into their shop and says that shelves are stocked with goods today, thanks to bondage Demonis. He announces that they need to pay five platinum coins to a single slave villager, and it is based on first come, first served. A spotlight reflects on a group of slaves sitting on the stage, and all the customers in the shop start to comment about their appearances and how they would enjoy the new meat. Among the slaves, there is a young girl with her mother who is trying her best to comfort her daughter, saying that the Lord Goddess will protect them. A voice from the side says that these goods seem to suffice. They all turn around to find a robot standing there as he throws a lot of coins on the floor, saying that they will take everyone on stock for today. The robot is a Grand Duke of Machines, a demon born from mankind's fear of advancements in magic, science, and technology. They are all shocked to see him, and they recognize him as the Grand Duke who seizes cities single-handedly. The owner quickly comes forward, saying that it is a pleasure to be approached by the man, and he will pack his goods, but first he wants to know why the Duke needs so many slaves. The Duke replies that today is the anniversary of the day he captured his 47th city, and he invited the other Grand Duke for celebrations. The shop owner quickly replies that he can understand, as there must be an understaffing problem around the Grand Duke's residence. The Duke says this is not the case, in fact he is going to host a hunting game and tells the owner to send all the slaves to the hunting ground, let them run desperately, and give the other Grand Dukes a chance to exterminate. 
The slaves are terrified to hear him and cower in their place as the Duke takes out his sword, asking the owner if he is allowed to inspect these goods if he is going to buy so many of them, and he doesn't want to disappoint the other dukes. The little girl kept praying to the Lord Goddess, begging her to save them from here. Lycia and others finally reach their destination as Sylvie explains that from her current intelligence, all underground slave transactions in the Second Stratum territory occur right here. Just then, a demon from a nearby shop calls Chengxi, asking him if he is interested in the newly arrived human girls and saying that they are just five platinum coins each. Even though Chengxi has seen this type of scene within the game before, witnessing all this in real time feels sickening to him. The buying and selling of humans had already formed such an industry that even things like human ranches used to appear. He recalls how he and his friends have wiped out many illegal dens like this in the game, and he is surprised that nothing has changed since he came to this world. Suddenly, a door to another shop beside them opens as a demon comes out, holding a bleeding human girl on his shoulder, while mumbling about how the Grand Duke didn't hesitate to slash her away. He throws the girl on the floor carelessly, and moves back inside. As they are silently observing the scene, Lydia senses that the girl is still breathing and tells Sylvie to heal her. Sylvie instantly follows her order and goes to heal the girl, while Chengxi is surprised by this as Lycia was pure evil in the game, and he is confused as to why she is pitying a human girl. He stares at Lydia, who is worriedly looking at the human girl, and keeps wondering if she is really an absolute villain. The human girl suddenly holds onto Lycia's robe and begs her to save her parents and the rest of her village. Lydia sits in front of her and asks her if she wants her to save those people. When the girl repeats her request, Lydia says that she is a demon and that dealing with demons comes with a price. After a moan of hesitation, the girl says that it doesn't matter and that she is ready to dedicate everything to the demon. Lydia smiles at that as she moves away, saying that a deal has been made and the girl should now leave everything else to her. Inside the shop, Blood drips from the Grand Duke's sword as he says that it is a shame that the little human girl was slashed away without putting up a fight. The shop owner is panicking as he says to the Duke that if he keeps going like this, all the resulting trouble will be very difficult to handle. Duke is not phased by his warnings and says that this is a remote place where the enforcement of the law ends, so there is no one to stop him. Just then, a voice from behind him says how the non-entities dare to stir up trouble here. He turns around to see Lycia walking in there with Sylvie and Chengxi. She looks at him with a glare and asks if he is ready to reap what he sows. The Duke arrogantly says that they just seem to be a mere group of meddlesome rats and tries to read their data, but is surprised when the system shows him nothing. He thinks that they must be guards or something, but he figures out that they are using anti-reconnaissance magic to hide their information. Chengxi is astonished to see the Grand Duke as he recalls how it takes the power of at least two human lords to defeat the Grand Duke of Machines, and is wondering if he will eat up his Ao now. The Duke suddenly points his sword towards them, saying that he is not in a good mood today, so he will get to the point quickly. He then says that it will be good for them if they don't meddle in his business since hunting games are a rare thing to host, but the weakness of these slaves leaves him dissatisfied so he has to find new slaves now and doesn't want to waste time fighting with ordinary people like them. His calling Lydia ordinary triggers Sylvie, who shows her true form and summons her tree again, destroying the whole place. Lydia also grows furious as she transforms into her true form and shouts at whoever gives them permission to buy and sell slaves in her territory. Duke is shocked when he senses the oppressive aura coming from her and can't believe that he is standing in front of Lord Lycia. All the slaves stare at the plant, Astonished when it releases them from the ropes, the little human girl runs toward her mother, asking everyone if they are all tight. Her mother happily hugs her, thanking the goddess who kept her child safe. Sylvie overhears their conversation and says that there is no goddess in this demon lord's city. The woman quickly thanks her instead, but Sylvie replies that it was Lish's mercy that they survived up to this point, so if they want to thank someone, they should offer it to Lord Lisha. The demons who were there to buy slaves are happy to hear that their lord Lishet is here and start to say praises to her, also bowing in front of her. She tells them to raise their heads, saying that they didn't expect such great fanfare today and only came here to deal with a few conspirators. She then calls Sylvie and says that, as the manager of this second stratum territory, what is her suggestion on how to convict those who have forsaken the law to trade slaves and talk down on her? Sylvie bows her head as she says that forsaking the law is indeed a felony and speaking so insolently to Lycia is a crime of treason. She continues that from her point of view, these sins are unforgivable, 
and the death penalty is the most suitable punishment. The shop owner is kneeling on the ground and requests that Lygia spare some face for his master, the bondage demon. He begs her for forgiveness, saying that he swears not to pull anything like that ever again. Lycia is not happy with his request to spare the bondage demon and says that he willingly did so knowing that the slave trade is prohibited here. She shouts that he has shown concern over her face and then raises her giant hand, capturing the man in her stronghold. He begs for mercy, asking her to spare his life, and he will not dare to do it again. Duke is shocked as he watches the scene unfold in front of him. Lygia eventually throws the shop owner back on the ground, and his soul leaves his body. The little cloud of smoke flies toward Lycia, and she says that she received his willpower, and it exudes something foul, befitting of an inferior demon in the end. She then turns toward the Duke, pointing a finger at him, and says that it is his turn now, and she is looking forward to finding out what his willpower tastes like. He tries to say something in return, but keeps stuttering, and then suddenly jumps in the air, trying to escape from there, but Lygia throws her magical bolt toward him, easily trapping him in it. The Duke shouts that he doesn't want to die and asks for Lycia's forgiveness, saying that he will do whatever she finds if she will let him live. He even offers to give her a million dollars, but Lycia is just unfazed as she says that she doesn't care about how large a bounty he is setting up for himself. She says that his life itself is a lot more valuable to her, and then she starts crushing the ball she had trapped him in. Soon it bursts into flames and only a whiff of smoke remains in the air. Lydia turns around excitedly, asking Chengxi how he liked her amazing performance, but to her shock, he is not there. She is confused because Chengxi was behind her the whole time before. A hand suddenly comes out of the rubble as Chengxi slowly pulls himself out while thinking about how Sildi really doesn't know how to say in advance that she will release Ao, and he would be buried alive by now if not for the ring he is wearing. He is happy at successfully coming out of the rubble and is thinking about how a little thing like this can't face him as he is a man with SSS tier luck. Suddenly, a huge sack from the sky falls on him and he is crushed back to the ground. Lycia finally turns around and is surprised to see him lying there on the floor. Chengxi is notified by the system that the host has been detected picking up boss drops and the system is booting. The notifications keep showing up explaining that the system is in dormancy and is switching to automatic mode after the initialization failed. It activates drop sharing, enabling Chengxi to share items with Lycia, and the item he gets includes a grand total of 1 million platinum coins. Chengxi is exhausted as he figures out that it was a million coins that knocked him out and feels like his excessive luck is both a blessing and a curse. He looks at Sylvie and Lycia, standing in front of him as his eyes slowly close. A thousand years ago, in the Elven Divine Temple, Sildi was ruling her kingdom happily. One fine day, a man came to ask her hand in marriage and seemed very eager to pursue her. She replies that her lover needs to be a true warrior, and if he can prove his courage and strength, she will respond to his request. She tells him to fetch some precious items, including the doomsday refined silver and cold iron of an unceasing stream. The man is shocked to hear this as he shouts that these materials would take several months to gather. He is interrupted by a man coming there in red robotic attire and says that the man must be weak if he thinks these materials take so much time to acquire. The man is the player Dawn Star, as he moves forward and says that he has collected all the materials and is going off the prior agreement, Lord Goddess should respond to his request. He adds that he is hoping that she will use Yama Jade to craft a pair of wedding rings for him. Sylvie is furious to hear this, as she says that Yama Jade is their clan's most valuable treasure and he wants to use it as a token of marriage. She angrily asks him if he wants to marry her as a divine apostle. Dawn Star takes a few steps forward, saying that he has actually fallen in love with an untouchable woman, and maybe his feelings are too arrogant, but he can't stop them. He continues his sweet talk, telling how he has fallen for a pair of eyes that shine like moonlight, and he finds himself unable to freak himself from the shackles of these feelings. Sildi's favorability starts to rise as Dawn Star continues to show that he traveled all over the place so his feelings could be fulfilled and went through all the hardships just to complete her journey. He then requests that Sildi respond to his feelings, saying that he needs her help to have his genuine feelings satisfied. The other man who was there to ask Sildi's hand for marriage runs away, greatly impressed by the sweet conversation. Sylvie blushes madly in her seat as her assistant elf says that he is wondering if the die-hard anti-miscegenation elves would object to something like this. Sylvie is confused because she doesn't think she can be with a divine apostle as a goddess, but on that day she decided to follow her heart. 
In spite of countless difficulties, Darkstar later infiltrated various elf slave peddling rings to save her people, increasing popular approval of their marriage among elf kind. At his request, she handed him the elf monarch's jade, a pair of god-tier wedding rings, something a goddess can only create once throughout her life. After that, she was only looking forward to him putting that ring on her. They spent pleasant nights under the moonlight when Dawnstar told her that his real name was Wachin. At that time, Sildi thought that she had found someone worthy of lifelong commitment. On the day of their wedding, Dawnstar ran away, leaving her alone at the altar. It causes chaos in the elven world, as they wanted to find that man at any cost, but Sylvie was not focused on that. She just starts mindlessly walking, ignoring her assistant and shouting her name as tears fall down her face. Dawn Star vanished without saying anything to her, and he even took the rings. She was consumed by his immense hatred and wanted Dawn Star to pay for his wrongdoings. She was stripped of godhood because of this and became Lish's subordinate to find that man. She spent a lot of time sulking in her room blaming her naive self for trusting that man, but she is no longer that gullible. She comes out of her thoughts about the past when a maid informs her that Lisha is calling her to her room. Sylvie instantly follows the order while thinking about fully assisting Lisha, so she can use her intelligence network to expose that man. She finally reaches Lisha's room and asks her if she needs her help. Lydia tells her to check on Chengxi, who has been like this since the coin struck him. Chengxi is lying on his bed and keeps mumbling about how he is feeling dizzy and will only get better after getting a kiss from Lichia. Sylvie tells Lichia that there is nothing wrong with Chengxi, and that he is just pretending to be like this, so she shouldn't be fooled by his actions. She adds that her attacks as a guardian don't affect him, so it is impossible that he got brain damaged because of some coins. She then turns toward Chengxi, saying to him that she will call a goblin to smooch him if he doesn't stop acting like that. Listening to this, Lydia scolds Chengxi for sticking to her like this and says that she is very busy since she has to attend a demonist tea party. This party is held for demons to make all kinds of strategic decisions, and the content of this meeting relates to the overall development of the demon world. Lisha then says to Chengxi that even if they are not getting married immediately, he is still her property, and she can't send him into the hands of another demon. Chengxi is ecstatic to hear that and rushes toward Lichia, saying that they should get married instantly. She is annoyed as she reminds him how they agreed to get to know each other before getting married. Sylvie is feeling extremely annoyed by his antics and has this urge to tear his tongue whenever he talks like this. Lichia pushes Chengxi away from her, not wanting to be late anymore since she is worried that the full moon goddess will start calling her names. She then says to Sylvie that she will leave him under her supervision. Sively is annoyed and tries to protest that it is not in her duties and she also hates human males, but Lycia says that she has no other options because she can't let more people know about his existence. Chengxi also says that he will be fine alone as he doesn't want to be alone with Sylvie, but Lycia refuses, saying that she can't leave him alone to wander in the palace. He suddenly holds Lycia's hands and starts saying how she worries too much about him. Her gesture seems familiar to Sylvie, and she is wondering if he can be watching. The memory of her lover brings tears to her eyes, which annoys Lisha, who says that she shouldn't cry even if she doesn't want to look after Chengxi. Sylvie replies that it is just that his sweet talk reminds him of the Dawn Star. Lydia angrily says that she shouldn't think about that scumbag and tells her to take care of that guy since she is going now. Chengxi is sure that his end has come as Sylvie politely says to Lichia that she will take care of the situation while thinking to herself how she will make his day like he will never forget because she is determined to not let any clues about Wuchen go off the hook. Lydia instructs Sylvie to keep a close look at Chengxi while she is gone, no matter how she does it, and the only thing she has to ensure is that no one enters or leaves the room. Sylvie assures her that she will fulfill the task, and Lisha finally leaves after playfully telling Chengxi not to miss her too much. Chengxi desperately tries to stop her, but she ignores him, making him more worried that his entire facade might collapse if he is alone with Sylvie for too long. Sylvie seems excited at the chance of being alone with him and takes out a whip, saying how she has so many things to ask him. She continues in a cold voice that she can be more gentle with him, but she prefers getting her answers through torture. Chengxi flinches at his place as she slams the whip on the ground and threatens him, saying that she is different from Lichia and can easily spot a scumbag like him, so he needs to be careful while talking to her, or else she will let him taste the whip. Chengxi is terrified of her behavior, and when she asks him questions about his age and gender, he quickly replies to her. When she asks him his name, he replies that it is Wu Lauer, 
Sylvie's anger increases at his accidental name slip, which makes Chengxi more scared, but he already knows that it will not be easy to fool Sylvie. Deciding to take action, Chengxi secretly takes his partner's summoning ring, which can be used to teleport him to his partner, and it will choose a random number if he has multiple partners. His marriage contract with Lishia doesn't currently give him the ability to share attributes, but he can still use his innate abilities on each ring. He silently activates the skill and is oblivious to his actions. Sylvie continues that she already warned him to be careful while answering her questions, but he is still talking nonsense, and it seems like he won't be serious unless she restores him to harsh behavior. She raises her whip and tries to hit Chengxi, but to her surprise, he disappears from that place at the last moment and her whip hits the bed. Sylvie is surprised that Chengxi escaped, but it only makes her believe stronger that he did something wrong, which is why he is trying to run away. Before she can try to think of something, a shadow appears on her face. The shadow is cast by Chengxi, who has appeared there because the system recognized Sylvie as his partner. He curses the system as he falls on Sylvie's chest, murmuring how he is so unlucky to be randomly teleported back here. He tries to teleport again, but the system informs him that he has to wait as the skill is cooling down. Sylvie has come out of shock in his time and pushes him away, furious at this point, and says that he must have a death wish if he is trying to harass her like that. After giving him a good beating, Sylvie sits back on her chair, saying that they will return to their main point now, and asks if Wu Lower is his real name. She continues that he has a lot of time to speak truthfully since Ligia won't be back for a while and addressing him as Don Star Wuchen says that they are old friends, so it will not be difficult. Chengxi is shocked to hear her say that, but he still acts clueless, saying that he doesn't know anyone named Wuchen and that she must have the wrong idea. He adds that the name Wuchen sounds beautiful, and the guy with this name must be tall and handsome. His explanation makes Sylvie more annoyed, as she can't believe that he still doesn't want to come clean after all this time. An aura surrounds her as she stands up from her chair, saying that she wants to give him a chance to apologize for his mistakes and explain himself, but it looks like he is not guilty at all, which breaks any hopes she has about him. She suddenly releases a divine domain space, ready to murder Chengxi. When he is able to see after the small blast she has caused, he is confused to see the strange place in front of him. Sylvie tells him that this is her divine domain space for survivors, aside from the demon and that man, no one can enter here. She slams her knife on the ground, scaring Wuchen once again, and continues to say that the man is Wuchen. Sylvie angrily continues that the man was the sole being allowed to enter this divine domain, and his ability to be here is clear proof, so he can't argue about that matter now. Knowing that he has no way out, Chengxi requests that she let him explain himself, saying that there were complicated reasons for his actions back then. Sylvie shouts that she doesn't want to hear his explanation and asks what kind of complications can make him abandon his fiance and disappear for a thousand years without a trace. He tries to run away from her, but she keeps chasing him, forcing him to use a ring for protection against her. Sylvie recognizes the ring as Elf Morach Jade Ring and is enraged at the fact that he is still using it. This removes any doubts Sylvie still has about his identity, and he is curious about what excuse he will make now. Chengxi looks down dejectedly and apologizes to Sylvie for causing her distress, saying that it is really complicated. Removing the elf jade ring, he says that if his death can make her happy, he is ready to apologize for his life. Sylvie is not impressed by his emotional speech and runs toward him, asking if he thinks she will not murder him. Chengxi stands still at his place and says that she has suffered for so long, but before he can complete his sentence, she stops him, saying that he can't understand what she has gone through. Chengxi takes a step forward as he confesses that he never forgets all the good moments they spent together. Sylvie finally reaches him and stabs him with the knife she was holding. He falls on her shoulder, apologizes to her for everything, and confesses his love for her. Chengxi falls to the ground while Sylvie stands there with blood on her hands, sad that Chengxi said these words to her now. For the last thousand years, revenge was the only thing on her mind, but now she feels like she wronged him. Sylvie uses her healing power on him, desperately trying to wake him up. Chengxi slowly opened his eyes, murmuring why she saved him, while thinking to himself how this was a close call. He is relieved that Sylvie didn't murder him, and that his plan worked out. He comes out of these thoughts when Sylvie suddenly slaps him, asking him why he didn't avoid her attack since it was a very cheap death for him. Chengxi is confused by Sylvie's mood swings that resembled those of a kitten. Sylvie continues that it was very brave of him to act like that, 
so she has to praise him for that, and this is the reason she can give him a chance to explain himself. She advises him to tell the truth, as if she is not satisfied with his explanation, she will murder him directly. Chengxi is angry that he faced death, but Sylvie still wants an explanation from him. He is also annoyed with the system, as he doesn't know the consequences of dying without completing the mission. But he is determined to not die, even if Sylvie is not satisfied with his answer. So he decides to make something really dramatic. He takes off his eternal dragon soul ring, which is used to remove the opponent's defense items, and says to himself how Sylvie can't find out the whole truth. Chengxi then says to Sylvie that there is no choice now, and even if this conversation ends up with him getting convicted throughout the ages, he will not back away from discussing this top secret if it relieves his love from her confusion. He then continues that what he is about to share with her not only concerns all of humanity's well-being but the future of this world as well, and he hopes that she will not share this with anyone. Chengxi then tells her that he left her to comply with a decree from the goddess of creation. He explains that the creation goddess ordered him to infiltrate the demons and find a way to defeat them, so when he was engaged to Sylvie, he had to leave her for the mission's sake. After that, he had to do the same to his people, for their sake as the suzerain of Dawn City. Even though he really wanted to tell her the truth, it is better if fewer people are aware of this matter. Right now, he has managed to succeed in gaining Lisha's trust solely by relying on this new identity as the demon goddess's messenger and telling her that she can gain the divine authority of the demon goddess as long as she marries him. He apologizes to her, saying that it was the only way he knew to complete the mission, and once he is free, it is up to her if she still wants to murder him or not. Sylvie seems to believe his explanation and asks if he is going to marry Lisha. Chengxi replies that his love for her is genuine, and once his mission is over, they are together again. He continues that they can distance themselves from mundane disputes and hide away at the end of the world, where they are the only ones. At his confession, Sidely steps forward and kisses him deeply, agreeing to his offer and saying that she will look forward to that day. Suddenly, a flash of light comes there and attacks Chengxi, causing him to fall to the ground. Panicked, Sylvie calls Chengxi by his real name. Just then, Lydia comes out of the smoke, saying to Chengxi that she will remember his real name now. Sylvie is angry at her behavior but stays silent as Lydia approaches her and asks what they were doing as she caught them embracing each other. She grows suspicious as she asks Sylvie if she also wants to contend with her for Mother Demon God's divine authority. Before Sylvie can say anything, Chengxi slowly sits up, acting clueless as Lydia if there is any misunderstanding as he just helped Sylvie remove an insect buzzing around her eye. He then turns to Sylvie asking her when was the last time she cleaned that area if such an environment was allowed to develop on her face. He requests that Lisha not shoot him next time, as it only destroys his clothes, and even if her mana reserves are large, she can't go around abusing them like this. The three of them just silently stand there for a moment as Lydia assesses his excuses, and finally says that she just worried herself over nothing. She then pats Sylvie on the back, saying that she is so creative for preventing interlopers from making their way to Chengxi using divine domain space. Sylvie just thanks her in return and complies when Lygia asks her to restore the room to its original state now that she is back. Once the room is back to its old state, Lydia turns to Chengxi, saying that if he really wants to marry her, he should lessen this sort of contact with other women. Confused, Chengxi replies that Sylvie is her own subordinate, but Lisha quickly says that her subordinates are also included in this. Sylvie just silently listened to their conversation, not getting any input. Just then a voice came from outside, asking Lygia who she is going to marry and saying that she doesn't want to wait outside, so she is coming in now. A portal appears outside the door, and a face comes out, but Lisha shoves it back with her hand. The woman seems shocked by her actions and asks her to take her hand, but Lisha pushes her back saying that her room is a bit of a mess now and she will tell her when to come here again. The voice of the woman seems familiar to Chengxi, and he wonders if it belongs to the demon of the full moon, Xia Yuyin. Lygia suddenly makes a portal appear there, and in a panicked voice, she says to Chengxi that he has been in her palace for a long time and needs to have some fresh air with Sildi. Chengxi is shocked when Lisha suddenly grabs him by the shoulder and pushes him inside the portal. Once Chengxi disappears inside the portal, Lydia turns to Sylvie and asks her to follow Chengxi and keep him safe. Sylvie is excited to hear that and agrees to follow her orders. A portal appears somewhere in the mountains. Chengxi appears from it and lands on the ground with a huge thud. He is irritated with why the portal opened directly on the ground, 
but he is still relieved that he didn't land face first. Just then, Sildi jumps out of the portal and lands directly on Chengxi's sensitive parts. Realizing her mistake, Sildi quickly asks Chengxi if he is okay, and even though he is in great pain, he assures her that he is fine. Chengxi sits up after some moments and, looking around, asks Sildi about the place, curious about the beams of light. Sildi replies that it is the space magic of the full moon and all the lands that the beams of light envelop are occupied by human territories. Since the goddess of creation fell deep into dormancy, the demonices have fought around the sea's territory without constraint, and facing an existence as formidable as a demoness, humans can't help but lose the will to resist. Chengxi is shocked to hear the explanation, asks what happened to his territory, and announces that he is not leaving without checking it out first. Sildi replies that his territory was also not spared, and the Dawn City has fallen. She tells him that all the villagers, citizens, and townsfolk, including those in the capital, were imprisoned in the Beam of Light. Since the humans have been imprisoned for a thousand years, she is afraid they have long lost their will to live. Chengxi is surprised at the fact that his territory in the game is real, as are the humans living there. Even though the thousand years have passed, he still has memories of those times spent in the game, the upbeat environment, reliable companions, and even the literary scholars who oppose the nobility's monopolization of knowledge, and it is sad that they are all now deceased. Sensing his mood, Sildi asks him if he is okay. Chengxi turns around and grabs her, saying that he is fine as he is not an amateur crossing a great storm. He continues that if his territory has fallen, he can always reclaim it. He then asks Sylvie to join him as they go to the Dawn City. Sildi points out that they can't enter the city with the permission of the full moon demon, but Chengxi is unfazed as he replies that he has his own means. In the mineral bathroom at Lishia's place, the demon of the full moon Xie Yuyan is taking a bath and says to Lichia that she heard about her hiring a new cow maid, one with a special ability to prepare a milk bath and breast enlargement capabilities. Lichia, who is sitting opposite her, replies that she should give it up because even if she washes it, there will be no effect. Xia is offended by her statement and asks how they will know if they don't try, and she asks Lichia as she is looking down on her. Lichia replies that she is not looking down on her, but with her size, she is afraid it would be hard to achieve the desired results even after 10,000 baths. Seeing Xia's determined face, Lydia says that she will call Dany since she can't talk her out of this and advises her to leave quickly after finishing the bath as she is very busy. Once Lisha leaves, Xia smiles to herself, thinking about how she expected that Lisha would hide the messenger as soon as she came over. She is just looking forward to Dany gathering the necessary information so she can find out where her future husband is hiding. Meanwhile, Chengxi sneezes badly, making Sildi worried that he might have caught a cold, so she tells him to wear clothes quickly. Chengxi replies that he is okay and just feels that someone is talking about him. Changing the topic, Sildi tells him that the Dawn City is right under this barrier, but it is too concentrated for them to get past it. Chengxi is still not worried, as he says that this is nothing and takes out his certificate of land. Sildi is shocked to see the item in his hand and asks where he got it from, but in reply, Chengxi just says how her husband is amazing. He got this certificate after he brushed up Earth Goddess's favorability to the so-so level, but he doesn't want to share it with Sildi. Chengxi then raises the badge and uses it to pass through the barrier as he announces to the Dawn City that he has returned. After taking a look around the city, Chengxi is amazed by how cool the city is and wonders if the magic technology he produced back then was already being used on such a large scale. The thing that surprised him the most was a statue of the moon goddess, and he couldn't believe how big of an ego she has. Leaning against a pole, Chengxi says that there might be some mistake because this city doesn't look like it is occupied. Sildi replies that this is an occupied city, just like he noticed. Before she can say something else, a girl from the side shouts at him for being a pervert and orders the guards to go after him. Three guards come running there, telling him not to move and showing his ID as he dares to expose himself in public. Chengxi takes a step back, worriedly thinking about how he didn't bring an ID. Before the guards can reach him, Sildi steps in front of him, causing the guards to stop dead in their tracks at the sight of a demon. She says that Chengxi is her fiance and asks if they still have a problem with him. The guards quickly salute her as one of them says that they don't have any issues and says that Sildi is the epitome of all that shines bright. The three of them surround her, asking if she wants anything to eat or drink, and if she is interested in any special things about this place. They offered to massage her, as she must be tired, and asked if she wanted to go to a bath center since she came from far away 
and might want to clean herself. Chengxi stares at them from a distance while thinking about how the guard's behavior is defying the blood feud between the demon and mankind. He is not happy with how humans are disrespecting themselves in front of a demon, which is absolutely unnecessary as they are already in a bad place. Sylvie is irritated by the guard's behavior and tells him to leave. They follow her order without any hesitation and as they leave, Chengxi comments on how she understands what has become of the so-called occupied territory. Sylvie replies that what falls is human pride, and after looking at Chengxi, she reminds him to wear clothes. Chengxi quickly changes clothes using his trick and then drags Sylvie by her hand, saying that he will take her to some amazing place. Sylvie doesn't resist his touch and says that she will follow him to the ends of the earth. At the Counterfeit Works Library, the librarian is reading a book when she notices someone passing through and raises her head to ask the person for the pass. Chengxi stops in his tracks, annoyed at how he needs a pass to go everywhere. He suddenly grabs Sylvie's arms and pulls her closer, saying that she is his fiance and asking if he still needs a pass. The librarian is surprised to see that there is actually a Lord Dark Elf and quickly apologizes for not recognizing her. Chengxi is amazed to know that she is familiar with the demon kind. The librarian excitedly replies that to better serve her demon master, she even read the book called The Complete Demon Kind Chronicles a hundred times over. She is nervous to see the Lord's Dark Elf in front of her and doesn't know how she should act. Seeing her actions makes Chengxi angry as he thinks about how he wrote this book to allow mankind to understand the enemy and not favor them. He turns around and starts walking away, telling Sylvie to follow him and not pay any attention to these people. The librarian is sad that the demon is walking away from her, but she is more surprised by how a guy like Chengxi managed to marry a demon. Chengxi is sitting around the table, holding a book in his hand, and he looks very sad. Sylvie brings him some books to the table, and seeing his mood, she asks Chengxi why he is looking so depressed. Instead of directly replying to her, Chengxi asks if she knows the purpose of these books. Confused by the strange question, she asks if they are not used to recording the knowledge instructing the masses. Chengxi replies that she is right, as books not only allow others to gain knowledge, but they are also what change people's thinking. He continues that, as a rule, it is vital for the people to have a common way of thinking. But thanks to these books and their influence, the humans of this city have lost all self-awareness. He points at a book, telling her to take a look at it as it compares the children of humanity and demonkind. Most of the chapters in the book assert the superiority of demons over humans, and it makes humans out to be always reliant on the community or on their tools. The humans can never fall back on their own strength to solve the issue, but the demons, on the other hand, are assertive and independent, self-reliant, a race that's not so hopeless. Chengxi continues that he can admit that humans truly are weaker than demons, but it is because of this weakness that mankind must stick together. Back then, he founded this library to enable humans to unite and be brave through difficult situations, but he is devastated to find out what has become of his people now. He puts his face in his hand, and seeing his condition, Sylvie puts a comforting hand on his shoulder, telling him not to feel so dejected, because these people have been ruled by the full moon demon for a thousand years, and the idea of wishing one was a demon is deeply ingrained. Chengxi raises his head to hear that, and says that the humans want to become demons so badly that they might as well acquire their wish. He continues that for those who are not that shameful, he can bring them together to re-establish a new Dawn City. Surprised, Sylvie asks if humans can become demons, to which Chengxi replies that it can happen. But such a thing requires an ability called demonization of the full moon demon. His statement makes Sylvie wonder if she can return to Elfkind using this ability of the moon demon. In the meantime, Shia is drinking a potion as she murmurs how a sip of enriching merry water after finishing a bath is a supreme enjoyment. Just then her phone starts ringing, and she quickly picks up the call, asking Dane how it is going with the task she assigned her. Dane replies that she is already done and explains that she used tracking magic on the demon goddess's messenger and found out his location. She then tells Sista that she is sending her a photo of the messenger, and currently he is at the Dawn City Library. Sia is ecstatic to hear that and says it must be her lucky day since the messenger is already in her territory. She figures that it was the reason she couldn't find him anywhere else, and looking at his picture, she says that he is really unruly. Talking to Chengxi in her imagination, she says that he must have suffered a lot under Lisha's supervision, but he doesn't have to worry because she will be picking him up right away. She then quickly uses her magic to travel to the Dawn City, not wanting to waste any more time. At dawn, Chengxi is standing in the bathroom. 
thinking about how he will have to subdue the full moon demon in order to borrow her power, but he is not sure what he should do. Suddenly, the moon goddess appeared behind him and wrapped her arms around his neck, shocking Chengxi with her appearance there out of nowhere. Sylvie is calmly reading a book in the library when she gets a dispatching message from Litya, who seems worried as she asks her about Chengxi and where they are right now. Sylvie tells her that they are currently in Dawn City, which shocks Litya as she asks what they are doing in the Full Moon's territory. Sylvie apologizes and starts to tell her something, but Litya stops her, saying that the Full Moon Demon ran out on her to find Chengxi. Listening to this, Sylvie quickly says that she needs to protect Chengxi from her. Lishia is not happy with her answer and asks if she is against full moon demons now. She then tells Sylvie that she is coming and asks her not to do anything until then. Sylvie tries to protest, but Lydia hangs up the phone and tells her maid that she is heading out. She is angry at the full moon's demons and is planning to have a face-to-face -face chat with her. Back in the Dawn City, Xia is leaning over. Chengxi is lying flat on the floor of the bathroom. She says to him that she acquired quite some knowledge from her learning material and he can do whatever he wants with her. Chengxi is still shocked by her sudden appearance, and before he can think of a reply, he notices Nostomi's demon eye in the corner of the bathroom. Xia asks him if he is shy, as he is very quiet, but Chengxi is just thinking about why that eye appeared there. He is shocked when he suddenly hears Sylvie's voice in his ear. She tells him that this is the spiritual transmission she has established with him, and asks him to behave naturally so Xia doesn't suspect anything. Sylvie tells him that Lygia has come here, and she is watching his every move, so he needs to be careful. Inside the bathroom, Seiya says to Chengxi that she can be hot and sweet at the same time, as long as Chengxi likes anything she can do. Chengxi is impressed by her versatility, and Seiya continues that this is the reason he should marry her, and as long as he does that, he can get all the satisfaction he desires. Lysia, who is observing them through the eye, is not very shocked by this, as she already suspected that Xia had ulterior motives. It is natural that Xia is after the power of the mother demon goddess, but it is still surprising that she wants to marry Chengxi. Sylvie quickly climbs closer to her after hearing about the marriage of Chengxi. Her actions surprised Lysia, who never thought Sylvie could behave like this. Realizing her mistakes, Sylvie quickly says that this concerns whether or not Lysia can become an heir to the demon goddess, so she is also worried about this. Lysia easily buys her excuses and says that, in this case, they should watch the scene unfold together. Chengxi still doesn't say anything, and Sia continues that if he is not satisfied with her offer, there are still many demon beauties in her palace that can satisfy him. Sylvie and Lysia listen attentively as Chengxi replies that a proposal from such a lovely demoness is hard to reject, but he is still going to refuse it as he already likes someone. His statement makes both Lysia and Sylvie wonder if he is talking to them. His answer also surprised Xia, who says that it is very odd that he is rejecting the proposal of a beautiful girl like her who is assertive. At least something must have happened, and it makes her wonder if she got the wrong material. Seeing the DVD of Gal Games in her hand, Chengxi is surprised by how she is really good at this. Xia continues to say that she still has to reach her desired outcome, so she has to do this. She then drops the DVD in the portal, impressing Chengxi more, who thinks she is an otaku, a good one of culture. Not waiting for him to say anything, Seiya takes out a secret love potion and says that since Chengxi is not following the script, she has to do this. Holding the potion bottle in her hand, Seiya tells him not to blame her for these unconventional measures, while Chengxi is just confused as he feels like this already happened to him. Chengxi realizes that it is the same portion he fed Lishia inside the game, but now it seems like the script has been reversed. Tuga forces him to open his mouth and says that her vial is a bit large, but after dreaming, he will be her well-behaved darling. In the library, Lysia accidentally bumps her knee against the table after hearing Xia's talk. Before he is forced to drink the potion, Chengxi stops Kexia, saying that since she is so fond of him, she should feed him the potion with her mouth. Xia seems excited at his offer and quickly drinks the potion, saying that as long as Chengxi likes it, she is willing to fulfill it. All the sweet talk makes Sylvie furious, and she loses control, surrounded by her aura, making Lisha worried about her actions. Xia happily takes a sip of the potion and then asks Chengxi to come forward, but he instead pushes a hand on her mouth, forcing her to drink the potion. As soon as she drinks the potion, Xia falls to the ground, and with her face red, she says that she didn't accept him being so rude but liked his behavior. 
Chengxi is not fooled by her behavior and says to her that, as a demon, if she even drinks an entire stack of these vials, it will have no effect on her. Sia quickly drops her act, saying how he is very intelligent as a mother goddess's messenger, and declares that she is going all out now. Finally standing up from the ground, Sia says that she doesn't understand how he is so indifferent to the temptation. But if he comes to know her, he will soon realize that he is not just some vapid brat. Suddenly looking in the eye, she asks Lisha's opinion on that matter. Lisha is not very phased at getting caught and only says that Xia is actually very brave if she decides to directly provoke her. Coming into the bathroom, Lydia asks her how she knew about Chengxi's identity and location and if other people knew about this too. Sia calmly replies that it is a secret, and besides that, the messenger is assigned to all of them by the mother goddess, so Lisha can't claim it for herself unless she already married him. Lisha quickly replies that they are not married, and when Chia asks if she is his girlfriend, she also denies that. After getting answers from her, Xia says that since she is neither married to Chengxi nor dating him, there is no harm if she decides to pursue him as he belongs to everyone, and Lisha's desire to monopolize him is not justified. The chaos makes Chengxi wonder if being popular with demonesses is really a good thing, but he doesn't say anything. Lisha doesn't back down and instead asks Xia if she realized that monopolization is also a form of competition. She continues that it doesn't matter who comes, she will not let Chengxi fall into someone else's hands. Channeling her aura, she shouts that the authority of Mother Goddess is hers. Xia is surprised at her actions, but she quickly summons her aura too, ready for a one-on-one -on -one fight with Lisha. Seeing the demons ready to fight each other, Chengxi is worried that if they duke it out here, the city will be blown to pieces before he can even dream of rebuilding it. Quickly taking action, he stops both of them and says how it is a shame that they are ready to destroy each other to get divine authority. He continues in a questioning tone, asking if they thought that it only took strength to inherit divine authority. Addressing both of them, he says that they are all children of the Lord Demon Goddess and asks if they know how sad she will be if she finds out how they are getting into fights to contest for the divine authority. He says that, as a messenger from the Mother Goddess, he is responsible for selecting her hair. He is meant to observe their potential and judge whether or not they are qualified to inherit divine authority, but their immature performance just now makes him disappointed. The demons have both calmed down, and Xia is the first one to ask Chengxi what it takes to pass his judgment and become a qualified hare. Chengxi replies that it is a part of examination that he can't share anything with them. Xia quickly wraps herself around his arm, suggestively saying that he will have to examine her inside and out so he doesn't miss any small details. Chengxi faces her palms at her statement and replies that he will be very serious about the examination, so she doesn't have to worry about that. He then turns toward Lichia saying that he has a mission to complete, and since they are not married yet, he must fulfill his obligation to examine the other demon. He assures her that she doesn't have to worry about anything because his fondness for her will never change, and they can always connect with one another whenever she wants. Sia suddenly starts dragging him away, saying that they should go back to her palace and begin the test. She informs him that she has plenty of helping toys, which are sure to fill him with joy. Before they can leave, a hand slams on Xia's head, causing him to fall to the ground. She curses Lycia, who calmly says that no one mentioned that they would go to Exia's place for the test. She then continues that the examination will be at her palace, and she will make sure to examine Exia as well. They all go back to Lycia's palace, and she shows Xia her room. The moon demon refuses to stay there, saying that it is very gloomy and scary, and she will be horrified staying alone in such a place, so she wants to stay with the messenger. Lydia starts to walk away, saying that it will not happen. Chengxi jumps into saving the situation again as he pulls both of them close, saying that there is no need to make a fuss as the three of them will stay together. Xia happily agrees to that, but when they go inside the room, Lydia kicks Chengxi out of the room. Sitting opposite Lydia on the bed, Xia asks her what she is doing, to which Lydia replies that she is monitoring her so she can't scheme anything. Meanwhile, Chengxi is walking dejectedly in the corridor, talking to himself about how the two demons will ultimately monitor each other in one room, while he will be in the vacant room all by himself. He enters the room, thinking about his pitiful situation, and is surprised to see Sylvie sitting on his bed. Seeing him there, Sylvie says that he is the only man in this world who could turn demons of all beings into rivals in love, but it is a relief to see that he is safe and sound. Chengxi finally voices his surprise, asking Sylvie what she is doing here. She replies that she is here to see him as she is worried about him, 
and he is lucky to have escaped two jealous demons alive. Chengxi asks if there is a strategy in that and what is so attractive about him. He sits beside Sylvie and continues that he doesn't even like the demonesses. His statement makes Sylvie sad as she says that she has fallen and lost her godhood, which also makes her a demon now. Pulling her closer, Chengxi tells her not to say such things, as in his opinion she has never stopped being the elven goddess he has known. His words have a great impact on Sylvie, as she suddenly kisses him and, ignoring his protest, pushes him back on the bed. Chengxi is surprised by her actions, as Sylvie was not like that in the past, and she has clearly been affected by the bad company. Sylvie finally pulls back after a while and asks if he is feeling good. She says that with Lycia monitoring the full moon, they have the whole night to themselves. She is startled when she suddenly hears Lisha's voice in her ear, asking how things are going on her side. Sylvie replies that she is with Lord Messenger as they speak, in reply to which Lycia orders her to keep an eye on Chengxi all night, without letting anyone approach him. She replies that she will be sure of that and is surprised when Chengxi suddenly flips her position, lying on top of her instead. Her startled yelp alerts Lycia, but she quickly says that she just tripped. Lydia tells her to be careful, saying that she has the strength of a demon lord at any rate, so she can't do anything reckless. Looking at Xeia playing the video game, Lydia says that she has to be careful on her side. Even though Xeia seems mostly distracted, she still doesn't know what tricks she can plan. Sylvie seems to be struggling while speaking, as she assures Lycia that she will take care of everything. Just then, Xeia asks Lycia to join her since gaming alone is boring. Lydia hangs up, saying that she will trust Sylvie and Chengxi to handle the situation. As soon as the call ends, Sylvie pushes Chengxi away, who was blowing the air in her ear all this time. She shouts if he doesn't know how sensitive elf ears are. Before he can reply, a voice from outside asks if he is in there. Sia says that she knows he is not asleep yet, and since he wanted to test her, she is here now. They are both shocked to recognize Sia's voice, and Chengxi quickly asks Sylvie not to inform Lycia yet and instead leaves, as he wants to see what the full moon demon has planned. Sylvie is worried, but Chengxi assures her that he will handle the situation. Sylvie just tells him to be careful and quickly changes her appearance, just as Xia enters the room. The full moon demon is amazed to see the butterfly there, but Chengxi tells him not to pay attention to such details and asks how she is here when she was supposed to be with Lycia. Sia chuckles to hear this as she snaps her fingers, saying that she just had to use a trick. At the snap of her fingers, five of her clones in different appearances come there. Chengxi is shocked to see that, as he recognizes all the clones. Sia smiles at his reaction, saying he is surprised to see her clones, and tells him that the person Lisha is playing with right now is also her clone. She suddenly realizes something and asks how a messenger sent by the demon goddess can recognize these characters, as they all came from another world called Earth. She continues that if Chengxi knows all of them, it means that he is not a person from this world, and as far as she knows, people from Earth belong to the goddess's faction. She continues that this indicates that he is not a messenger sent by the demon goddess, and instead he is a divine apostle under the goddess creation. Chengxi is worried that he will be exposed, but he doesn't show anything and instead says that it is not odd that he knows these characters as he has been to the other world in person. At Seda's shocked reaction, he continues that the power of Grandmother Goddess can open the gate to another world, and he has been to that other world with Grandmother Goddess. He then says that unlike him, she never left this world, so how does he know these things from the other world? This makes him suspect that she is the imposter who was sent by the goddess. Furious at his words, Sia takes out her gun and shoots the rays at him, but he stays unharmed as the system detects the attack as fusion strikes and makes him immune to any damage. Chengxi then asks Xia if she really thinks a divine apostle can have his strength, while on the other hand, he recognizes that the weapon she is holding is from another world, so how did she get her hands on that? Xia is worried for a moment about what she should tell him and then continues to say that she got it from divine apostles. She says that they said they liked her and wanted to become her friends, so they gave her a lot of things from their world. The character she just saw from another world also came from the things she got as a gift. Chengxi asks her if she is still in contact with Divine Apostles, but Xia quickly denies that, requesting that he let her explain herself. Chengxi doesn't listen to her and instead says that she is a traitor, scaring Xia with his statement. Xia asks Chengxi not to take anything in the wrong way as she really came into contact with the Divine Apostles, but the things are not what they sound like. 
She continues that she has always followed the directions and never betrayed Grandmother Goddess's wishes, and she was only interested in the 2D culture of the other world. Chengxi is calmly sitting on the bed now and asking if she likes Earth. Xia enthusiastically replies that she likes Earth because the place has Wi-Fi, new lands, the latest games, and even Bilibili. She continues to describe how the Earth is like the heaven of her dreams, and beside all that, there are so many amazing guys there that she wants to meet. Chengxi is sure she is exaggerating as Xia continues that her favorite is a monster called Godzilla, as he is both strong and beautiful, and on top of that, he engages mankind in fierce struggles to defend the Earth, even giving up his life in the process. Listening to her explanation, Chengxi says that if Godzilla destroys the Manking, the 2D culture she likes will also die. Sia thoughtfully replies that she thought about it too, and if that is the case, then persuading Godzilla will be worth a try. As a powerful demon, she wouldn't accept such behavior even if he became her subordinate. Seeing her fascination, Chengxi says that Earth is not that great since there are still areas that are plagued by the war. Sia replies that she is aware of that, and that she will keep the Earth under control, just like Dawn City. This makes Chengxi realize that Se Yuyan is planning to invade the Earth after gaining divine authority, and she would take any chance to reach the Earth that exists, more so than other demons. Sia is calmly sipping on her drink while Chengxi is thinking to himself that the fact that the goddess of creation could allow him into this world means there is a way to reach the Earth, and if the demons united to discover such a way, the Earth would be entirely overrun by them. Xia finally notices him staring at her and asks him why he is doing that. Chengxi replies that he was just wondering what she was drinking. Sia replies that it is Coca-Cola and asks him if he wants a drink too. She brings a cola out of a portal and passes it to Chengxi, who is happy to see that she managed to get it here. He quickly opens the cola, thinking about how he never imagined he would be able to get something from his hometown here. Sia stares at him, amused, and as he finishes drinking, she asks him if he feels anything. Chengxi is confused by her question, so Xi explains that maybe his body is getting warmer, his mouth is drying up, and he is extremely hungry for her. Chengxi quickly realizes that she might have given him the Trojan and quickly checks his status to confirm his suspicion. After checking his status, he finds that Xia tried to drug him, but the system recognized that as an attack, so it had no effect on him. He throws the can on the floor, deciding to go with it so he can find out what Xia is going to do next. He suddenly pushes Xia on the bed, acting like he is intoxicated, and asks her what she did to him. Lifting his head up, he says that he can't control himself and wants Xia. Seeing his condition, Xia removes his clothes, revealing her body, but when Chengxi moves to touch her, she disappears from there. Enjoying the situation, Xia says that if he wants her, he needs to catch her and keeps moving around the room when Chengxi tries to catch her. Chengxi is impressed by how Xia really knows how to act around a man, and if he were not immune, he would have easily fallen for her charm. Sitting on the bed, Xia calls him toward her, but when he tries to do so, she disappears again. She continues to do that until Chengxi gives up and falls on the ground, asking her why she wants to torture him like this and what she wants from him. Xia replies that this should be crystal clear to him. As long as he marries her and surrenders the divine authority like a good person, she will give him anything he wants. Chengxi argues that he already has Lisha, to which Xia replies that she can give him ten times whatever Lisha offers him, as her clones are also authentic beings. Chengxi is thinking about how Xia went for a full mile after getting Ninja, but he decides that it is time for him to advance in the mission. He takes off one of his rings and presents it to Xia as a wedding ring. She happily takes the ring from his hand, saying that he should have done this in the first place and spared himself from all that suffering. Chengxi has given her the Eternal Dragon Soul, which removes an opponent's defense system. Taking a good look at the ring, Seiya asks him how his body is feeling now and if his lust has reached its limit. Chengxi curses her in return, but she just asks him if he is complimenting her and thanks him for that. She then puts the ring on her finger and happily cheers that the day when she becomes a god has finally come. She gives an evil laugh, while Chengxi just smirks, looking at her as he takes another ring off his finger. Just then, a window appears in front of Sita that contains her wedding vows. She quickly says that she will do it, eager to do it as soon as possible. At her agreement, she is informed that her marriage is effective from now on. After the magical field slowly dissipates, Sia looks at her hands in wonder, murmuring if it was a success, and she has become a new god. 
She clenches her fingers, excitedly saying that she is going to claim the earth as her friends at Billabilly are waiting for her. She raises her hands, asking Aizkai Gate to give her a manifestation. But to her shock, nothing happens. She is confused about whether she got the chant wrong and tries again, while all this time Chinxi is casually munching on a banana. Sia tries different chants, but to her frustration, nothing works. Chengxi finally speaks as he asks her if she is done playing. Sia awkwardly turns around and asks him why she can't open the gate to another world as a god. Chengxi replies that it is because of the power of the demon goddess, and everything about that was a complete lie. He just did it so he could trick her into marrying him. A thousand years ago, inside Si Yuan's palace, the players were trying their best to cultivate favorability by presenting her with DVDs of different games. They argue with each other as they try to present Xia with the best gift of her liking. Xia is enjoying this as she thanks them for the gifts and says that someone else really likes them. She is amused by how these people are so gullible because she only uses illusions to create fake favorability, and they just throw things at her. Just then, there is a loud bang as a wall is destroyed, and someone shouts that they are under attack. Xia's fans are not happy that someone is disturbing their honeymoon with her, they turn around, determined to get rid of anyone who dared to attack and protect Exia. The smoke slowly disappears, and Lygia emerges from it. Seeing her amazing breasts, Exia's fans quickly change their attitude, injuring Xia, who steps in front of them and asks Lycia what she wants. Instead of replying to her, Lydia uses soul chain ability and ties Xia in chains. The fans are shocked to see that and start murmuring about it. Suddenly, someone from behind says, that they are just making noise, and asks if they don't know that they have been deceived by the full moon's illusions. They are shocked to see that it is Dawn Star, the first player in all of history to conquer a demon. Dawn Star replies that no one can subdue a demon under normal conditions, and that her so-called favorability was just an illusion. A girl from Xia's fans seems to believe him, saying that it is no wonder that such an impossible thing as Xia's favorability maxing out can happen. Another one comments that he must be telling the truth, as Dawn Star is the only man capable of subduing a demon. One of the fans says, what plans could the man who conquered the demon of lust have in this palace? His statement makes everyone question Dawn Star's intention, and they demand that he leave the place, saying that even if they are deceived, their love has not disappeared. Suddenly, they are hit by the rays sent by Lycia, and they die instantly. Sia is shocked to see her fans getting attacked like that, while Dawn Star praises Lycia for her actions. Sia turns toward Lycia, asking her how she can help a divine apostle, and is shocked when Lycia innocently says that she has to do what her beloved asked her to. Sia turns toward Dawn Star, asking him what he did to Lycia, but instead of replying to her, Dawn Star just says that there is no need to waste time explaining when she will be like her soon. He takes out a potion. Sia recognizes it as the love goddess's secret potion, but she has no way to escape. Back in the present, Xia has all her memories back and says to Chengxi how she remembers that he is Dawn Star, the most terrifying divine apostle in all of history. She also recalls how he was the one who overpowered her and Lisha. Chengxi is surprised that she remembers all this because as far as he remembers, those memories of the demons should have been erased by the goddess of creation. But Xia remembers all of that. He is confused by what is happening and is shocked when he figures that memories might be restored once the marriage contracts are established. Sia suddenly says that she doesn't want to marry him, but Chengxi calmly replies that it was her who wanted this so desperately, but she is regretting it now. Sia is furious at him and says that even if he doesn't believe it, she will make his identity public and every demon will hunt him down. Chengxi is not fazed by her threats and says that she can do whatever she wants, but she should remember that their lives are shared now that they are married, and if he died, she would not be able to live either. Enraged, Sia picks up her weapons and runs toward him, saying that she will murder him. Chengxi just stands there calmly as he stops the weapons with a finger and says to her that as long as their marriage contract is in place, she can't hurt him. He then announces that he also grasped her abilities, and when Shia looks at him confused, he tells her to observe. Just then he uses the magic, creating multiple clones of himself and turning them into big buff men. Sia is devastated to see this as the clones continue to say stupid things, and Seiya shouts that she can't take it anymore. At the same time, on the second floor of Lisha's palace, a bat is flying around a sleeping dragon, who finally wakes up from the noise of her wings. The dragon is Lu Li, 
a dragon goddess who was once a noble dragon goddess, but later, for unknown reasons, she entered into an agreement with Lycia and became the guardian of her palace's third floor. The bat tells the dragon to come forward, and as he does that, he finds Lycia standing there. The dragon comments on how Lycia is finally here, in reply to which Lycia asks if she is looking for something. The dragon replies that she distanced herself from the ancestral land to act as her guardian for some hundred years, and the time has come for Lycia to fulfill her promise. Lycia says that if the person she wanted to murder has shown up, the dragon replies that it is true, as she just sensed a reaction from the eternal dragon soul, and the man has appeared, so now she needs Lycia to fulfill her promise and help her murder that guy. Lycia says that it is not an issue, but first she wants to introduce her to someone, as her revenge plan will go a lot smoother with this person involved. On the second floor of the palace, in Sildi's room, she is searching for something, and after some struggles, she finds it hiding behind some stuff. She looks fondly at the broken picture of Dawn Star and wipes the dirt from it with her hands. Just then, Lydia enters her room, saying that there is hope for getting her revenge, and Sylvie instantly gets worried about the possibility that Lydia might have discovered Chengxi's identity. Oblivious to her thoughts, Lydia continues that she is going to introduce her to a colleague who deeply suffered under that person, just like Sylvie, and has grasped that person's footprints now. She explains that it is the Aurora Empire's sacred guardian, Ebast, and the ruler of the Dragon Clan, the Dragon Goddess. Sylvia is surprised to hear that, just as a young girl steps into the room as Lycia says that her name is Lu Lai. The little girl says that she is happy to meet Sylvie, but the elf goddess is shocked by the fact that Dawn Star wouldn't even let children slip. Hearing her concerns, Lu Li quickly says that she is not a child and changed herself into this form after losing her divine right of rule. Caressing her head, Lydia says that it is true, as Lu wasn't this lowly when she met her. Lu is offended to hear this and tries to attack Lycia, who just laughs at her, which makes Lu more annoyed that she is treating her like a kid. Lycia quickly apologizes for her behavior and gives Lu a lollipop as a peace offering, which she takes while telling Lycia that it still doesn't settle things. Turning back to the original topic, Lu Lai says that the man known as Dawn Star had not only betrayed all of humanity, but even toyed with the goddess' feelings to cheat them out of precious treasures. They, as goddesses, can't leave matters at that, and they need Dark Elf's help, so she should join their organization too. Lua Lee announces that the organization will be called Justice League of Avengers. After a moment of silence, Lydia says that this must be something mentioned by Xia, and asks Lua why she is giving the organization that name. Lua Lai is surprised at how she just said that without thinking, but before they can start arguing about it, Sylvie interrupts, saying that Lu is a goddess for the Aurora Empire as well as their sacred guardian beast, so is it really okay for her to cooperate with demons? Lu Li replies that it has been so long since she was a scared beast protecting the Aurora Empire. Surprise, Lydia asks Sylvie if she doesn't know that the Aurora Empire broke with the goddesses entirely, and now only the Falcon Federation and Vesalia powers firmly profess faith in the goddesses. Lycia is not happy that Sylvie is that clueless and says that even though she is grateful for her great work, Sylvie needs to learn about the world's dynamics every now and then. Lu Li continues the conversation, saying that the goddesses also prohibited humans from studying magic technology, and the Aurora Empire itself is the birthplace of such practices, so the goddesses slipped up in this matter. She further tells them that being a goddess left her in an awkward position as the Aurora Empire's guardian sacred beast. If she didn't leave, she would become the enemy of a number of goddesses who supported the ban. When the Aurora Empire broke the goddesses, she was no longer tolerated, so she left following the resignation ceremony. The dragons cast her aside from the Aurora Empire, and she is no longer on good terms, and she is unwilling to mingle with the other goddesses. With all that, her most trusted lover also betrayed her, so all she left with was whatever they would call obsessive will she have to live. Sylvia is surprised to hear that she wasn't the only person. Dawn Star proposed too, but she doesn't mention that and instead asks Lu Lai if she already discovered the position of that person. Lu Li replies that she only senses his aura for how, and when his specific location is determined in a day or two, she will notify Sylvie. Listening to her, Sylvie asks her to make sure to include her in the hunt. Lu Li excitedly replies that they can capture him successfully with Sylvie's help and she will personally escort him back to the Dragon Holy Land, where he will be tortured and questioned slowly, and she will demand justice for Sylvie and the rest of their sisters. Sylvie tells Lu Lei to torment him well, 
as this measure is the punishment for him, and he should be punished for his sins for a long time. Sylvie is thinking to herself how there is something pleasant in Luli's words, and she is not sure if she really wants to monopolize Chengxi. She is already planning to never let Lu Li succeed, thinking about how Chengxi only belongs to her. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, give a like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.